we go on the boardwalk, Atlantic City, Hard Rock Hotel and Casino playing host again to Cage Fury Fighting Championships. CFFC 107 main card will be on USC Fight Pass later tonight, so make sure you logged in, signed up, all ready to go for that fantastic card. But first, got three prelims for you here. Let's get the action started. We start things off tonight with a featherweight matchup between a pair of fighters who have some adversity, but have rebounded nicely. It's BJ Young and Victor Ortostano. Proud to be back in Atlantic City and maybe even more proud to have CM Punk back alongside me for the first time in 2022. He's a busy man out there making moves in Hollywood, but he's made time for us at CFSC tonight. Punk, good to see you again, my man. There's no place I would rather be on a Friday night than beautiful Atlantic City next to my pal, John Morgan. That's what's up. Calling fights. Legit, this is therapy for me. I'm going to have fun tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I love it. Vitor Oristano, the man that is making his way to the cage first, comes to us with a 3-3 three and three record. All three of those wins came by way of knockout. We're seeing him in the CFSC cage for the very first time. And I said at the open, guys dealt with some adversity. He opened his career at 0-2. But he's 3-1 and one in his past four contests since then. So he actually took a couple years off, kind of shaped his game up a little bit. Six years, in fact. I shouldn't even say a couple. Six years reshaped his game and seems to be in a, a, in a different form now at 3-1. and one. Well, if we're going to talk about mixed martial art tropes, he's coming into the Eminem curse. <laughs> There's no bueno. Somebody should have told him. I don't know if this has the word not gotten down to Brazil that this is obviously an imminent person. It is a very real thing. Could just be an American thing. I don't know. If it's on American soil and you're using Eminem, you got to rethink your priorities. I don't know. Leche Nino is uh, the nickname there. What's that mean? Something about kids' milk or something. I don't. I don't know. I'm gonna have to, somebody's got to chime in and tell me. I think it's kids' milk. I don't know where that came from. Vitor Oristano making a CFSC debut. Let's meet his opponent. Just kind of wanted to let that music play a little bit. Get a little groove in there. The Reek and Rebel, BJ Young. He knows how to bring the energy to the cage. 29 years old, a very familiar name here in the CFSC cage. Four and two. He's four and three as a pro, including four and two here in the CFSC cage. So he's fought here quite a bit. We've seen him a lot. Opened his career at 3 0, suffered a couple losses, but we saw him last time out pick up a win, get off that losing streak, the Nick Catone MMA product back in the win column and looking to repeat that tonight. I think BJ Young is a guy that you can't let his record fool you. The reason he has lost those three times all the triangles is because he's such an aggressive wrestler. Right. He goes forward and he shoots and shoots and shoots, and that has got him in a little bit of a trouble in the past. But if his opponent cannot weather the wrestling storm, Vitor Orasano is in for a long night. Five of seven of BJ Young's fights have ended in the first round, so be ready for that. He brings the action. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape, our opening prelim of the night here at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. You see BJ Young a little bit taller there. Both experienced and had some setbacks, but one most recently. Let's take it up to our man, Dr. David Sarnoff, for the official introductions. Tonight, this bout of the evening is scheduled for three five minute rounds in the CFFC Featherweight Division. This bout has been brought to us by Jack's Clothing. Ajora, Jepe a mi a jedeto, lutando do canto azul, pesando m, 145.6 pounds, com um historico profesional gi, three wins and three losses, lutando por, DMST and Nova Uni Al, lutando pela, EU de Janeiro, Brasil, Vitor Campos, Aristano. Now, standing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, weighing in at 146 point even pounds, with a professional fighting record of four wins and three losses, fighting for Nick Catone MMA out of Jackson, New Jersey, BJ Reekin Rebel Young. <laughs> Referee in charge of the action once the bell rings. No nonsense, Keith Peterson. 
just want to point out that was not the secondary audio track in there. No, Dr. David Sarnoff was busting out some Portuguese. Yeah. Look at that. What a sophisticated gentleman. Sir, you ready? He really is. Sir, you ready? Trying to make Vitor Aristano feel a little bit at home here. He's in the black and white trunks. DJ Young in the black tights. Red tape on the gloves. And I already said it. I mean, you just see BJ going forward. Coaches have probably tried to temper his uh, his excitability to an extent. But there you see that shot from way out. Didn't set it up, so he didn't get it. And you touched on the aggression. So there it is. Walking forward with big punches into a shot. Looking for that takedown every time. Look at this. Look at this. This is exactly what I meant. He's so aggressive, and he's such a great wrestler. He chains things together very beautifully. Doesn't get it, switches to a double. Doesn't get the double, switches to a single. Comes up punching, creates scrambles, and it's very oh, dangerous. Oh, he got caught opponent. there. That aggression kind of cost him in that one, as you said. It's a, it's a risk-reward strategy, and he got clipped there moving forward. I, I, I feel like I can say this because my wife is Puerto Rican. That he, he fights like a Puerto Rican. He goes forward. Eddie Torres fights like this. You know, they, they have they have that fire. It's in their blood. They, it's not that they fight angry. They just fight passionate. And he's, he's somebody who lives by the sword, dies by the sword. Makes him an exciting fighter for sure. Back up against the fence here. Good defense by Oristana. I'll say Young working from the outside, but struggling right now. That aggressive wrestling is there, but Oristana showing good defense now. As I say that, he does get the fight to the floor, but Oristana immediately back to the feet. Yeah, Oristana keeping that wizard, and that's what's keeping him alive and back on his feet. And now we reset. See if Young wants to slow it down a little bit. No, he's not taking a, he's not taking a backward <laughs> step. I didn't think so. A little bit of the corner work over there. They're telling him to relax and settle down a little bit, but that's just not the style. Don't leave in. Don't leave in. Stanya, still working on the outside. Look at the time, those entries. See if he can land another big shot. Did land a left hand over the top right there. Uppercut snuck in there as well. I feel like BJ switching stances too. Or so, or Stanya with the right hand, and then Young shoots in. PJ's not scoring on the double, but he's up. Oh, Looks like we got a Darce, Darce attempt here from Oristano. Definitely got the setup. Let's see if he can get the squeeze. Great corner for BJ Young. CFFC alumni, legend, superstar in the, uh, the, the eastern, eastern part of here, America. Shorty Santella, BJJ black belt, multiple time champion. See the best the UFC Fight Pass has to offer on the Fight Pass 24-7 stream, offering a constant channel of historic fight action all day, all night. Tune in, sit back, and enjoy a network, network created by fans for fans. Step into our world. I was trying to keep one eye on the read and one eye on the action there. It's hard to do. Oh, that was a nice body kick by Estanio. I don't think it was low. I think that was right on the money. Keith Peterson was looking right at it, so it must be a solid shot. Now you see Oristano trying to capitalize. One hook in, but... Look at that constant forward pressure. Comes out punching. The best defense is a good offense. Beautiful work there. Oh, knee inside there. A little over a minute remaining here. It's been a fast-paced round as we expected. Yeah, both guys obviously showing a little bit of signs of fatigue, but that just speaks to the volume that both guys are throwing out. BJ Young trying to catch Oristano coming forward with a front kick. Another great sprawl by Oristano. Young with that aggressive wrestling you mentioned, but at this point, Oristano has been sniffing out the shots a little bit. Now trying to control the neck as well. 45 seconds remaining in round number one. It's been a fast-paced, high-intensity round. Oristano is trying to finish it with a flourish. Yeah, it looks like he's uh, he's pouring it on at the end of the round here. He's going to the body more frequently. I think his corner's telling him to do that. He's finding really good success. Oh, the right hand as well. Beautiful takedown there, but Orstano scrambles, looks to attack the leg. Great movement there. 
BJ now the one on the receiving end of a takedown. This fight has been all over the place. Or Stein, you want top here's the final seconds tick off the clock. Big punches, and uh, you said it. Orstein really kind of started to take over in the latter stages, and what looked like a great start from BJ Young ended up being a great finish for Orstein. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this fight started off about the forward pressure of BJ Young, but that is something that uh, could wind up biting you. I think both guys are feeling this. That felt like a long five minutes. <laughs> you see the corner here, Orstein getting his legs up. This is, this is about a minute of recovery, and we'll show you why BJ's got to recover here. Gets hooked, gets hit with that nice left hook, which drops him, but immediately into wrestling mode. You see him grabbing that right leg. You see him just trying to wrestle back up. There it is again. Gets dropped clearly, but immediately defensively wrestling. He winds up working that way back up to his feet. There's that body shot. Wow. You see those toes curled, dug right into the liver. And again, BJ instinctively Dropping to shoot, trying to wrestle. That is his best defense. Took some shots to the body there. Let's see how he recovered. As you said, a relentless pace in, in round one. It looked like it took a little toll on both men, to be honest. But it was a good finish by Orestani. Let's see what adjustments Young makes, which, I mean, he's, he's not going to go away from that wrestling, I wouldn't think, but maybe just needs to set it up a little bit more instead yes. of shooting from range. Yes, that is, uh, I agree. I, I think uh, when guys shoot from so far out, especially in MMA, you can see it. You can sprawl. And that's that's what guys train for. You know, you got to set up takedowns with kicks, punches, a variety of attacks, make your opponent think, give him a lot of different looks. Stanya had a nice low kick there and immediately went high. Giving Young something to think about. Young did punch his way into that takedown. Got pretty deep on it. Does get the single. Can he keep it there? Orstanio's shown some solid scrambling, but Young is trying to establish that top position right now. Yeah, great defensive uh, wrestling by Orstanio. You see him rolling when he gets into positions. Right now he finds himself in a little bit of trouble. BJ almost mounted him. Orstania wanted to invert, couldn't do it. Young doing a great job now controlling for the neck as they work back to the feet. Can he get a little squeeze on the neck? No. Oh. Slips the right hand as well. And here comes that patented BJ Young aggression once again. Always moving forward. I think you can tell both guys. I'm not saying they're tired. I'm saying they're they're, they're feeling it, right? Absolutely. You, when, you're, when you're locked in a cage with another human being, that first five minutes, man, that 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 is the true test. Yeah, that was a relentless pace in that first round. So take a little active rest out there, catch your breath, and get ready for another run. Well, these scrambles that both guys are getting into are taking a lot out of both guys. That inside low kick again. You can see the redness. It's a smart, smart strategy by Orstania, especially in the second round. Attack the body of BJ early in the first round. Dropped him once. Wow, both guys connected there. Yeah, big right hands exchanged. Orstania trying to follow the left. There's the takedown. It's a wow. nice one for BJ Young. See, his technique is so good. Orestanio stuffs the first attempt, and then BJ just turns a corner somewhere, and he takes him down. And now it's going to get a little bit interesting. BJ on top, and Orestanio's full guard. Great job controlling the ankle there to keep him down. Orestanio has shown excellent scrambles, but Young established that position once again. Yeah, he's got a lot of time to work here on top of Orestanio. He can hear his corner, Shorty Santella telling him to keep his shoulders on the mat, get a little busy, body, body, head. This, this to me, for a wrestler as aggressive as BJ, this is this is active rest for him. Even though he's staying busy, he's, he really wants to hold Orestanio here, and he's already lost him. Oh, wow. Slick little transition there. Deft little touch to stay on top. And again, Orestani is doing excellent work from the bottom, but Young smothering right now from the top and reestablishing that position, trying to sneak around to the back. Orestani did a good job of using the cage, oh. landing that left hand inside. That was nasty. Nice elbow, followed up by a nice knee from BJ. They're right in front of us, and BJ scores another takedown. Another phenomenal takedown. The technique's so good. 
And this is the first time he's really been able to establish top position for an extended period of time. Yeah. Like a lead blanket. This is where when you're in Oristano's position, you start to feel it. And it's more mental than anything. This is what you train for. It's got to be mind over matter at this point. Oristano so far has done a really good job of constantly getting up, constantly scrambling, defending. He does a real good job of getting the butterflies in, creating positions where he can get back to his feet. But again, BJ's forward pressure is just so impressive. It gets him in positions like this. And he's got a minute to work. Happy to maintain that top position. Oristan, you're looking to scramble, but you got to think the, the energy just, it, it can't be there the whole time. I mean, he's been able to scramble and roll and turn. This is the first time where I think even Oristan was like, you know what, maybe we'll just chill here for a little bit. You can't help it when you're in there. You, you can't, you can't help it. You're like, oh, I'm so tired. I'm not getting punched in the face too bad. I could just lay here for a minute. More than 20 seconds remaining in the second round. Keith Peterson gives a little warning for punching in the back of the head. Stein is trying to press away, but I think he's probably going to finish this round on his back. Yep. Here, the 10 second clapper there. Young going to try to put an exclamation point on it here at the end. Finishing up strong. I like that. I do too. You hear that? You hear the clapper, you go. Yep. And I think that probably cinched the round for him. You know what I mean? If, if, just in case, because it was a situation where, yeah, he wasn't doing a ton of damage on top, but he spent a lot of time on top. But let me just make sure the judges so, oh, no, I did land some pretty big punches there at the end. Yeah, absolutely. You want to leave the judges. The last thing you see in a round is you on top. Some good exchanges here. Both guys landing with some strikes on their feet. There was a good elbow and a good exchange, and uh, BJ winds up shooting, getting the takedown. And here's that elbow I was talking about right there. Man, that was that was inches, inches away from the sweet spot, but it still scored. And then there was a nice knee from BJ, and this beautiful trip. The story again being BJ's BJ's wrestling. It's fantastic the way he uses. You know, locks up the upper body and then hits the trip with the lower legs. It's, just oh, it's, it's super beautiful. fascinating to me that you look at his entire career and you see how the wrestling has been a crutch for him, right. but also his greatest success. <laughs> it's feast or famine. Round three on my highly unofficial scorecard. I think it's even right now. I'd, I'd agree with that. Let's see who's got something left in the tank in this final five minutes. As you'd expect, BJ Young walking forward. Vitor Oristano looking to counter as he moves on the outside. There's the, the deep wow. shot. That was a very nice double. He kind of he kind of disguised it by some punches there. That's it. I think that's the adjustment that he's made, right? In the first round, he was just kind of shooting from range. Since then, he's kind of used some punches. But Oristano, again, that excellent scrambling. Back to his feet. Oh, does get caught with the right hand. Shakes his head, which probably means it hurt. Both guys a little bit slippery. Harder for BJ to hold on to Oristano. Early in the third round. Right hands up. Hands up. This corner telling me sure and keep the hands up. Oristanio is a dangerous striker for sure. You mentioned it, three wins all by knockout. Showing some heavy hands. Definitely see the damage on the leg there as well. There's another kick right to the same spot. Dig deep here in this third and final round that I think is probably up for grabs. Yeah, this is this is the hardest part right here. I don't, I don't know what the corners are telling the fighters. This is where open scoring would make this even more interesting than it is. And we both assume that this is an even fight. First round for Oristadio, second round for Young. Could be anybody's fight, but if that open scoring was there, man. BJ again. Shooting on a takedown, grabs a single and gets it. Beautiful adjustment there because it wasn't the greatest entry, but he's able to adjust, run the pipe. Now he's on top. Or Stun, you're going to have to work with his back. He's trying to get that right leg up high on the shoulder, see if he can set up something, but Young able to clear that threat. Now Young's going to use that shoulder pressure, head pressure, just control from the top. He's happy to sit here and work from top position. Well, especially if oristano has got his guard closed. You know, he, he's done a really good job over two rounds of putting his feet on BJ's hips, standing up, scrambling. I haven't seen it too 
I haven't seen a lot of submission attempts. Let's see right there, he's got his right foot on the, the left hip of BJ, and he does this. He scrambles out, gets into a much better position. Oh! Those look like they landed pretty good. Those up kicks? Yeah. That looks like he's okay, though. Settling back down on top. And as you said, that's been the real key point. Or Stanya with the early going. You, you just couldn't keep him on the mat. And now it seems like he's a little more willing to settle. Although here he's trying to turn and clear out. But Young's just doing a much better job of keeping him on his back. Yep. Now he does scramble to his knees. And there you go. A hook in before he gets a chance to roll. And Young stays on top again. Nice adjustments. We the final two minutes here. It's fascinating to me that the, the BJ Young, his entire career has mirrored this fight, or this fight has mirrored right. his career. Maybe loses the first round, comes back, maybe wins the second round, and he's dominating this third round just by position. Sure. You know, and I, I just think that shows the caliber of fighter he is. You know, wrestler's mentality, always moving forward, always learning, always catching some up kicks. I was going to yeah. say, what? I want to watch those, man. That, those first two look rough. He walked through them, but Oristano's trying. But again, Oristano just hasn't been able to get off his back. In round one, he was so able to turn and roll and spin and just wouldn't stay. And now Young's been able to make those adjustments, stay active in the top position. And you got to think the judges is going to reward him for that should he go to the final bell here and go into the final minute. Yeah, but BJ's not content in just staying in Oristano's guard. You see him right here. He's moving to a better position. He's in side control now. 45 seconds remaining. Young working from side control. See if there's any options for him here. Corner wants him to go to half guard just to make sure that you keep him on the back. Not bad advice with 30 seconds left. BJ still working. You see him throwing those knees to the side. He's staying busy. Corner wants him to uh, knee cut into mount. Instead gets trapped in Oristano's half guard. Not a lot of time here for Oristano to do much. Well, he's got to do something special from his back. Tough to do. Final 10 seconds here. I think Young's going to be happy to stay on this, but see if he can posture up, maybe land a few more as he did the end of round two. Oristano just throwing those elbows. Credit to him for trying to make it work. Until the final bell. Uh, nice show of sportsmanship there by both fighters. BJ's happy. In his mind, he knows he did it. And I'd have to agree as well. You see the crowd reacting as well. Had some rough moments in that opening round, but made the adjustments and showed just the type of fighter as he is. You said it in the, in the walk-in, you know, an aggressive wrestler. And he showed that, made some uh, fantastic adjustments, and I think was able to take those final two rounds from Vitor Oristano. We'll see if the judges agree with us here shortly. Love the show of respect. Look at it. Coaches congratulating BJ. We assume he won. And we'll take a look at exactly why we assume that. Big shot early in the round, third round. Big double leg takedown. BJ makes it look easy, but he has worn his opponent down over the first 10 minutes. He's worn himself down, too. Still moving forward. BJ working, staying busy. Oristan, you're trying to get out here. But you see BJ opening up with some ground and pound. Those aren't Tyson hammer fists, but he's scoring points like a wet blanket all over Oristano. Fantastic work. We said he's a high yep. energy fighter. He brought it all the way to the end. Vitor Oristano, dangerous. You know, he landed some nasty leg kicks, showed some heavy hands, showed some uh, creative jujitsu, but ultimately, BJ Young was able to establish control of the final two rounds, which we think will propel him to a decision. We'll find out if that's right. Let's take it up to our man, Dr. David Sarnoff, to get the official decision. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard. All three judges have the bout. 29-28 for your winner by unanimous decision. Out of the red corner, BJ Reek and Rebel Young. The judges got it right. Yep. Pretty easy one to score, and a great effort there from BJ Young, who's, as we said, had a couple setbacks. Now he's got a couple wins in a row, and... Uh, Man, he's got a cheering section here. The fans love him. I think that's a great fight for a guy like BJ Young because he he clearly has stuff he can work on. And I know those coaches, I know that team, they're going to sit down probably in the locker room in a couple minutes 
and watch that fight and say, you know, Monday morning we're doing this. Tuesday we're doing this. We're working on this. Uh, I, I love to see it. Good win by B.J. Young. Fantastic work. And more to come, of course. Stay with us. This is as real as it gets, and it's mind-blowing. I love everything about that fight. These are the moments that the fighters live for. I can't wait. Oh, I take him in the face. Oh, Rose. We will all witness a piece of UFC history. And you just go, holy shit. The double tap does what he wants. Master, teach me Kung Fu. One of the most epic fights. There's nothing I do better in this life than fighting. I'm broken, baby. This team is unbroken. We have a sport with some of the best athletes in the world. Boom! One of the greatest knockouts you'll ever see. Oh! UFC has never been stronger. It does not get any better. Uh, that is good. This is a crazy sport, ladies and gentlemen. Action carries on here at CFFC 107. Two more prelims before we take it over to UFC Fight Pass for the main card. Let's get the next two fighters to the cage. The preliminary action continuing at lightweight next. It's decorated Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Black Moon. Victor Cervero taking on 20 year old Isaac Watkins. The man you see making his way to the cage there, Isaac Watkins, making his professional debut tonight. Just 20 years old. We did see him previously in the CFSC Next Gen Division. Went 1-0 there. Fought most recently uh, in May. That was that CFSC appearance. Closed out his amateur career with a decision win over Itzo Babalatze at CFSC 97. That's not easy to do. It is not easy to do. So we were impressed by what we saw in his lone CFSC Next Gen appearance. And now we're fortunate enough to have him make his professional debut here in the CFSC cage as well. We'll see what this young man can do. I get I, I get so excited when I see these you know, 19, 20, 21 year old guys that are already in the professional ranks because you know they've grown up doing this. They've got years of training already. I mean, it's that it's that new generation now that saw the UFC from the time they were a little kid and said, I'm doing that. Yeah, it's a different generation, man. No more stylized fighters. No more boxer versus wrestler. Everybody's mixed martial artist. What song is this, by the way, John? You know? I do not know. Okay. <laughs> I didn't get the track list tonight. <laughs> Let's meet his opponent, who I'm very intrigued with as well. You see here Victor Silvero running to the cage. Highly decorated Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt who's had plenty of success in international competitions. He's a, a U.S. national championship, a, a national championship in his native Brazil as well. But now training out of King's MMA and turning his attention to MMA. He said, you know, when he started doing jiu-jitsu, he always thought that he'd do MMA at some point, but kind of wanted to get his black belt first, be a champion in BJJ, and then turn his attention to MMA. He's doing that now. As I said, he's doing it under the watchful eye from Master Rafael Cordero at King's MMA. Not a bad crew to do it with. No, no, that's a, that's a pretty badass gym. One and O. Oh. If you look at his record, it, it says it's an amateur fight, but it was actually a professional one. So if you happen to be looking that up in the databases, so it's his second professional fight. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for this lightweight matchup. The prelims continue here. You see the big age discrepancy there. And while it not, might not look like a lot of difference in the record, Highly seasoned black belt, Victor Silvera, so we'll see what happens. Let's take it to Dr. David Sarno. Tonight, this bout is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the CFFC lightweight division. This bout has been brought to us by SC Arms. Now, standing to my right, fighting out of the blue corner, weighing in at 156 even pounds, making his pro debut, fighting for G2 out of Harvey, Illinois. Isaac Watkins. 
Standing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, weighing 156 even pounds with a professional undefeated record of one win and no loss, fighting for King's MMA out of Los Angeles, California, Victor Silverio. <laughs> Referee in charge of the action once the bell rings, Gasper Poppy Chulo Oliver. Poppy Chulo. Poppy Chulo. Dr. Dave having some fun in there. Isaac Watkins in the white. Victor Severo in the uh, greenish gray. Like green. Nasty leg kicks from the BJJ master. That's that King's MMA influence. That's confidence in your jiu-jitsu too, right? Like, go ahead, grab my leg, take me down, see what happens. Yeah, I talked to him a little bit before the fight, and he said, "Look, I, I want to, I want to work on my stand-up. I want to show that I've got stand-up." He's like, "But I do know in the back of my mind, if this thing goes to the ground, I'm good." Oh, another nasty low kick. You gotta think Watkins might not have been expecting that. Well, I talked about there no longer being you know, specialized fight, but there are black belts, and it's a different world. So if you're that comfortable and you're that you know, comfortable with your own jujitsu and you got the confidence in it, it lets you open up on the, the feet a little bit more. I think that's what you're seeing right here. Yeah, awarded his black belt in 2013, by the way. So, I mean, he's been at it for a minute. And as you said, it allows him to be really free on the feet because there's no concern about what happens if it hits the ground. That's your world. But on the other side, Isaac Watkins, you know, he, he defeated Itzo Babaladze. And if you're a CFFC fan, you know what that name means. That, that guy don't quit. That guy's tough as nails. Yeah, showed some character there for sure. Showed some big left hands there as well. Yeah, it looks like uh, Isaac has gained the, the respect of Vito with those shots. See the long frame there for Isaac Watkins trying to use that to his advantage. Barring the big left hand down the middle. There, quick hands as well, though. Impressed by his striking early in his career. Yeah, so far I think that his best weapon are those leg kicks. Not a lot of punches have been landing. Both guys are trying, but those leg kicks are clearly landing. I'd like to see him end with a, a leg kick. He's throwing combinations. Nothing's really getting through. I'd love to see him put a punctuation on that sentence with a nice leg kick. Or drive through and get the takedown and say, okay, well, that was fun. We enjoyed the stand up. I've got enough of that. Let me show you what I'm all about. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Watkins defending well right now. Trying not to expose his back. Certainly doesn't want to do that. And you can see Severo has the, the leg laced through there. Yeah, that's the old broomstick. He could try to use that to trip him up, drag him to the ground, decides to hit him with a couple of knees instead. Trying to slip around to the back there. Not a good spot here for Watkins. Got to be careful. Apologies, we're having a little issue with our clock right now. So I don't know exactly how much time is remaining at the moment. Watkins wisely switches over. He's got a wizard now. Severio pushing him up against the cage. We got two minutes left in this round. <laughs> I help from the truck. I'm just telling you now, Punk no, is not no, that no. amazing at I, knowing I, the time. I set, my, I set the timer on my phone every every fight. Every round, well, as you should. Strong whizzer by Watkins. Brings both men to the center of the cage. And listen, that's got to be a confidence booster for Watkins. You were in some potentially bad spots. You were able to fight out of it. You know you're going against a gifted grappler. That one was a little bit low. You've got to believe Keith Peterson was here. He wouldn't allow that nonsense. None at all. Big left hands being inspired in there by Watkins. There we go, yeah. Body as well. Hey, mouth right up. Let's pick the face up. Give me some combos. Move, combo, move. Ooh, one minute remaining here in the opening round. Now, do we just have a problem with the clock, or are these guys just going to fight until somebody drops? <laughs> We just said no time limit tonight. We're bringing yeah. it back to the old school. A little jungle fight. <laughs> They'll just have a little graphic issue. We'll, we'll have it. We'll have it repaired shortly. I, I assure you. Lovely. Never a dull moment around here, John. Not one. 
Boys. Flurry, 30 seconds remaining. Opening round. One, two. Give me one, two here. Oh, the left hand dropped him. Might not need that 30 seconds. He's trying to finish it. Although, Severo, if he can gather his wits, obviously this is his strong suit, and Watkins wisely says, let me back away. 15 seconds remaining. Can Watkins hit him again in this final 15 seconds? You hear the clapper there. Is Silvero clear? The right hands land. Still a little wobbly. Watkins is headhunting right now. And there's the end of round number one. Wow, I was just going to say what an even round it was, how maybe potentially difficult it was going to be to score. And then Isaac Watkins changed all of that in a heartbeat. And Watkins' corner is fired up, yelling at him like almost he did something wrong. But he did something right. He ate some leg kicks in that first round, but obviously he ended up with the big right hand that dropped his opponent. I think we're going to take a look at it right here. Now, we're setting it up with these leg kicks, John. You see a lot of these leg kicks, and we talked about Victor Silverio's jiu-jitsu being so good that he wanted to test out his stand-up. And here, here's a big takedown. Didn't get to implement his jiu-jitsu because Isaac Watkins, Watkins is sneaky good with his base, his defensive wrestling. Got him back on the feet, and here's that big punch. And you watch this right here. Right before that, Victor switched stances, and that let, allowed Isaac to just realize that for a split second he was a little bit off balance and just blasted him. Drops Victor. You got to think that round goes to Isaac now. Yeah, 100%. And you know the other thing, too, you know, Victor, I thought one of his best weapons was that low kick in the opening round. But after getting countered like that, you got to wonder if he's going to be willing to throw it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure Watkins is going to be looking to drive that left hand down the middle again. Fortunately, you see on the screen there, our clock is back. So apologize for that brief issue in the opening round. But we're good for round two. Got to get it all worked out before we go to fight pass for the main card. 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you're... Logged in, signed up, ready to watch over there because we've got a great card over there. Yeah, Silverio not being shy about throwing those kicks still. Goes up high as well. Yeah, I like it. I mean, it was successful for you. Yes, you got countered, and that hurt, and that cost you the round, but you were having some success with it, so go with it. Yeah, I mean, he, and he went right up the ladder that time, too. He started low, went to the body, and then went to the head. <laughs> Ripping off a big left hand, you guys. Brimming with confidence. You know, they did get into a brief grappling exchange. He was able to deal with it well. And uh, I think he's hunting that knockout after he nearly scored it in the opening round. Over there for Severo. He shoots from range. Sprawl for Watkins. Wow. Look at this. Oh, oh. We're going to see how the Brazilian wow. Jiu-Jitsu black belt, he looked like he was swimming for a leg there. Always makes me nervous. Really was. Beautiful little scramble, but Watkins got out of it. Alert. You see Austin Severo's covered in sweat as well. He's very slick. Made it a little easier for Watkins to spin, but he did all the right things to get out of a potentially bad position. Now back on the feet. Oh, that one broke the guard of Silver. Sil <laughs> <laughs> we're, on, we're, we're, on, we're on face pass well, right now, yeah, right? Yeah, we're good, we're good. Facebook? Prelims, this is where we're working all out. Yeah. Well, it's been a while, man. You missed the first it's been two a shows this it's year, been a minute. You know? Jillian DeCourcy's going to make fun of me on Twitter now. It's okay. I've been doing Hollywood projects. Oh, I've been doing projects, all right. <laughs> Watkins, with the defensive wrestling again, stuffs Silviero as a takedown attempt. Thank you very much. Yeah, Watkins has dealt with all these situations well. Oh, look at that. Yeah, he's got the double unders. He just kind of can't even say he dragged him to the mat. He just fell to his back there and now controlling the posture, keeping the arms wrapped. Oh, nice little elbow from the top there for Watkins. So Aaron's happy to stay here. And hear from across the cage, Watkins' corner yell, got him right where we want him, baby. <laughs> well, he does have it trapped up against the fence, which obviously limits what Vitor can uh, do from his back. You got to believe Isaac Watkins' ground and pound is heavy, right? You saw what the one left hand did. 
knocks Silviero right to the canvas. So these elbows he's throwing and these punches, and now you can see Silviero just holding on to Watkins. He does not like that ground and pound. Now he's turning for that leg again. Here's the moment. God, that's it. Did he? Oh, I thought he tapped. He was reaching to grab the fence. I now thought Gasper he, Oliver was going in there. He grabbed the cage, and I think that might be what saved him. Yep. I saw Gasper Oliver rushing in. I thought there was a tap that I didn't see. Instead, yeah, he was warning him to let go of that cage. He's got to get that leg out of there. You gotta, yank, just, you gotta yank that leg out. Don't let him twist. Oh, he'll turn it. Leg's still in danger. You gotta try to face him. It's a very he's good point I mean, out. He's, he's grabbing I, I, Okay, so he's grabbing something. One minute remaining here. This has been the best opportunity for Silvero in the fight. Let's see if he can capitalize. Watkins has to be careful here. One wrong move. And your fortunes have completely changed. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if punching the guy in the face right here is the greatest strategy. He obviously feels comfortable, but that is what's going to happen. You got to defend the lock. You got to get your foot out of danger. That, that that means you're hand fighting. And Silviero is all in on this. I don't. I can't see if he's got it. Obviously, trying. Watkins not in pain. He's throwing punches to the right thigh of Silviero, but Silviero is not going to give up on this. Might just be waiting this out here. 20 seconds left. Tension. I mean, it just takes one minor adjustment, and you're screaming in pain. But right now, now. It looked like he might try to switch to a knee bar there for a split second, but Watkins does the wise thing. Rolls out. Great spin from Watkins to get out of there. Was in some real danger. Oh. Trying to axe kick to the body there. Little stomp. Style points. Walks away at the end. Wow. That was tense right there. And, yep. uh, you got to wonder what that does to both guys. Because Victor Severo, that was definitely his best attempt to potentially get a submission here, but uh, was not able to capitalize. That's got to be a little bit frustrating. Meanwhile, Isaac Watkins, I think, hey, I've, I've seen your best. Here's the replay right here. A nice shot attempt from way out by Victor. Lines up underneath Isaac Watkins, and Isaac Watkins scrambling to stay on top. And you see that right butterfly, or the left leg butterfly, immediately goes to this ankle lock. And you're right. You know, a couple inches to the left or right on that one, and Isaac Watkins is, you know, he's tapping or he's going to the hospital, maybe both. Great attempt to win this fight in the second round by Victor Silviero. Interesting to note that between rounds, Nick Limbo uh, did come in to speak with Gaspar Oliver. I don't know if it was about those fence grabs. Looks like he was making that kind of fence grab uh, hand movement. So I don't know if they were talking about should there have been a point taken, should there have not. Well, so it's interesting, right? I think he initially grabbed the fence, and then he abandoned that. And he was grabbing the side of the cage, so technically wasn't grabbing Not the grabbing fence, the fence. You know, which could be good product placement. Let's try to have him grab the OnlyFans advertisement uh, <laughs> next time. Nice right hand stuck in there by Watkins on top of the low kick once again. Ferris got to make something happen. Watkins still trying to drive that big left hand in there in the third round. Dropping him round one. Dealt with some real submission danger in round two. Just showing some well-rounded skills as Isaac Watkins, 20 years old. That's pretty impressive, being 20. And look how composed he is. He's obviously got power in his hands. He's got good wrestling defense. He recognizes the bad spots he gets put in. He gets out of them. Patiently working forward there. He did catch the little left hand. That's also self. Nobody likes self. That's right. Uh, the left is starting to score a little bit. Silvero. Left hand down the middle continues to be a big weapon for Watkins. Again, seeing the worst of it, has to be feeling confident. Again, was in some bad spots there briefly in that second round. Worked through it. He'll, uh, he'll be happy to play this game for the remainder of the fight, standing up. Well, if you're still here, once you try to engage, nope. 
got tagged with a two-piece right there. But yeah. you try to engage in some more grappling in the open mat, see if you can kind of get to that leg positioning? I would think so. I mean, I, I know it's, you know, oh, nice little right hand there. I know it's frustrating sometimes when, you know, sometimes guys just go straight to, you know, Imanari roll in or something yeah. like that. But, I mean, circling on the outside, no disrespect. I don't think that's your best position to win the fight right now. So I think, yeah, let's just create some scrambles and see if I can get a hold of you. Yeah, Watkins continuing to just move forward through accommodations. Defends nicely as well. I mean, to his credit, he's, he's that lead left. I mean, here you go. Now we're talking. Exactly. Yeah, he did it. That's it. Beautiful. That's what he needs to do. Watkins, credit to him, got out of it quickly. But you know what? That's I, the I, I, I keep doing that, to be honest with you. Yes. Just keep trying that. Yes. I know it gets a little frustrating to fans sometimes, but, uh, you know, it only has to work once. Well within the rules. And if he's dangerous there, you know. Absolutely. Make Isaac Watkins think about it. Severo circling on the outside right now. Throws a big kick to the body. Two minutes remaining. Got to think he is going to need a finish here. Just misses wow. over the top of the high kick. Uh, made his coach jump out of his seat. He thought he, he thought he connected with that. That was scary. He's trying, though. You know what I mean? He's, he's, he's trying to win this fight. Yeah, give him credit for that, right? Even if we think maybe a little bit more grappling might be recommended. I mean, he is trying, and he's having some success. And, you know, had he landed with that kick to the temple, he might have shut us all up. Well, he's gone back to what has been successful for him in this fight, and that's the leg attacks. He's throwing those kicks, and he's scoring them to the body, to the leg. It's going to be an interesting scorecard, I have a feeling. Minute 15 remaining. As you said, nobody's really put an exclamation mark on this round. And Severo's probably been the busier fighter, to be honest with you. Landing with those kicks to the leg, kicks to the body. Yeah, again, the kick to the body. Watkins seems the more dangerous man on the feet, but this round, Severo's been the busier fighter, landing more frequently. Really got the feeling Watkins wants that big left hand highlight reel knockout, though. He felt it in the first, thought he was going to have it when he dropped him. Didn't get it done. Now trying to set it up again, but Severo doing a good job of managing range, staying out of trouble, countering as he moves. Over half a minute remaining here in round number three. Oh, nice little uppercut there from Severo. Right hand scores there as well, but Watkins answers back. They're trading punches in here. Oh, man, we got fireworks in the last 20 seconds. I like it. Let's close big. Crowd comes alive in the final seconds here. Atlantic BJJ City. Black Belt throwing in the pocket. Yeah, Atlantic, only in Atlantic City. The kick to the body there, lead left lands as well. And that's gonna do it. 15 minutes in the books, and as you said, Punk, it could get interesting because listen, that third round, I feel like Silvetto is the, the, the more active fighter, maybe I'm wrong. Don't have the, you know, official stats here in front of me, but it felt that way. Now round two, was that series of submission attempts enough? Was it threatening enough yep. that it takes it on the judges' card? I don't know. I can't, my unofficial scorecard, I feel like Watkins probably took, it definitely took round one. I feel like Watkins probably took round two, but was it up in the air? I mean. Yeah, that's a fight where I actually, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't want to say it's close. I'll, t I'll say that. This might take a minute, too, to get the the tallies from the judges too and that tells you a lot boy and how costly would that have been had there been a point taken for that that fence grab i mean a three-round fight a point uh can be big but as you said he released it pretty quickly let's take a look at some of the, the action for us early in the third round right here i feel like this was just a lot of back and forth both guys were throwing combinations both having their moments, and then they closed out the fight in a great way, only in Atlantic City. Will you see a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt just stand in the middle, throw down with his opponent who's got heavy hands. Love to see it. Both guys trying to end this fight with 10 seconds left. That's how you do it on the boardwalk. I don't care if you're a black belt. You get in there and throw down. I actually saw two guys trying to do it on the boardwalk earlier. They got to a big old dust up <laughs> over some churros, it looked like. Oh, well, that's understandable. Yeah, 100%. Come on, man, you touch a man's churros, you got to answer for that. Yeah. Come, come see us here at CFSC. We can arrange that. We, we'll, we'll do churro battles. Sign him up. 
<laughs> Boy, I tell you what, Punk. You said it. It's taking an awful long time to get a scorecard in Dr. David Sarnow's hands over there. I'm seeing a lot of ring and hands over there. Maybe a little. I think they've got the abacus out over there trying oh, to add it up. Well, there's one thing it can't be. It can't be a draw, right? Three rounds. There clearly was never a 10-8. Nope. All right. So, you know, a 50-50, it could be a draw. I don't know. <laughs> you never know. All right. It looks like we do have the scorecard in hand. Dr. David Sarnoff has a microphone as well. Let's let him get into position, and let's take it up to him for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judge's scorecard. Judge Billick has to fight 29-28 for the red corner. Judge Caroline has to fight 30-27 for the blue corner. And Judge Sanidad has to fight 29-28 for your winner by split decision. Out of the blue corner, Isaac Watkins! Man, you said it. Scores is going to be all over the place. I mean, the only thing that was clear was round one. It felt to me like the right guy to win the fight was yep. Isaac Watkins. But as we said, that round two was but close. 30-27? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Round two was the round, th I think it's round three especially. Scores literally all over the place. 29-28, 28-29, 30-27. -28, Judges did not agree. But Isaac Watkins, impressive at 20 years old, victorious in his professional debut. And uh, Victor Silvero, he'll be back as well. Yeah, we got I'm, not, one I'm not mad about the decision. Not at all. We got one fight left on our prelim. Stay with us. Preliminary battle of the evening says CFSC next gen champ Mark Gray making his professional debut against promotional newcomer Hector Iglesias.
emerging from the lights, a familiar face, Mark Gray, 29 years old. You see the highlights there in the corner. This is a man we've seen a lot of. You can see a whole bunch of takedowns, ground and pound, him being aggressive, 4-0 and oh in CFSC's next-gen division, according his, including, I should say, his last win in October, where he picked up a decision win over the formerly undefeated Justin Carter to claim the next-gen featherweight title. Now down at Bantamweight, fought four times in seven months as an amateur, won them all, won them all pretty dominantly as well. And uh, I thought this was so good. The, the records of his opponents in the amateur ranks, you know, okay, went 4-0 is the answer. The record of his opponents was 8-1. I mean, he was fighting legitimate dudes on the other side. It wasn't like, hey, let's just get some cans and line you up against somebody and just get a couple wins under your belt. Just, no, let's get you experienced. And uh, Punk, I mean, I don't want to speak for you, but I, I think we both agree this, this man has been impressive in his amateur run. Very impressive. Uh, I want to also talk about how impressive it is that Ryan Cafaro is in his corner with a torn ACL. Go Ryan Cafaro. That's commitment Listen, right there. What's interesting to me about this Mark Gray is that he fought at featherweight and he first pro debut has moved to bantamweight. That tells me it was planned. 100%. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for this key match. If you see, he made it just fine, 136. Both men in their pro debut. Laces will be just a little bit taller, but we'll see how it plays out. Let's take it to our man, Dr. David Sarnoff, for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the CFFC Bantam Weight Division. This bout has been brought to us by RK Chevrolet of Vineland. We do it right. Now, standing to my right, fighting out of the blue corner, weighing in at 134.4 pounds, making his pro debut, fighting for Shoot the Box and Hanzo Gracie Academy out of Newburgh, New York. Hector Eli Super Boricua Iglesias. Now standing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, weighing in 136 even pounds, making his pro debut, fighting for Nick Catone MMA out of Rockway, New Jersey, Mark Gray. The referee in charge of the action once the bell rings. No nonsense, Keith Peterson. All right, final prelim of the night. We kick it over to USC Fight Pass after this one, so make sure you're all logged in there. Hector Iglesias in the uh, black and white, Mark Gray in the solid black. Uh, I don't think I'm giving away the game plan when I say expect a takedown from Mark Gray. He'll set it up. He's not, he's not going to just shoot from range. He'll set it up. Oh, I mean, this is how good the fights bar. are. <laughs> this is how good the fights are here at UCFFC. This, this to me, this should be on Fight Pass. I agree. I was a little surprised this was on the prelim, but happy to see it. I think we'll see. Mark Gray, if he can be victorious here, I think this next one might be on Fight Pass. You know, I, I just think two guys making their pro debut, uh, a highly touted prospect like Mark Gray and somebody who's tough as nails like Hector Iglesias, yeah, I, I think fight fans would want to see that. This is the kind of action that we deliver here at CFFC. And I feel like only Elon Musk is watching it on Facebook right now. <laughs> he owns Facebook, right? It's him? I think he's buying it right now. All right. Mark Gray doing a real smart thing here, trying to keep Iglesias' shoulders pinned to the mat, smothering him with his wrestling. And just like John said at the top of the fight, there's no secret. He knew what he was going to do. Yeah, this man just grinds you down. And oh, big, you see the power that he has in his hands as well. I mean, he had landed one big shot, but even in the ground and pound as well. I feel like this frantic energy from Hector Iglesias underneath Mark Gray. And Mark's just waiting for his spots. And when he sees one, he uncorks with the shot that we just saw. He'll have uh, elbows at his disposal now, which he didn't have during his next year career. That's a scary thought. Yeah, because he did a lot of nasty ground and pound without the elbows. Right now, you see half guard underneath for Glaciers. You just that kind of frantic energy. You wonder if that's, you know, kind of that nerves of the pro debut. You know, you probably realize this is the spot you didn't want to be, but, you know, you got to be careful with that energy level, with that type of frantic movement. It's looking like a Randy Couture fight, you know, happy to be in half guard. Let the guy underneath you, you know, flail around, tire himself out, pick your shots, dominate. You saw, he, even with all that action going on, he had the wherewithal to look over his corner and get some direction. I mean, he's, he's familiar with this position. This is what Mark Gray does, and now he's firing those 
Elbows and forearms in there. Oh, just missed on a big one there. Glacius has got you something because he does not want to spend the rest of this round underneath exposing himself to those big shots. Halfway through the opening round, again, pro debut for both these fighters. Five minutes is going to be a new thing for them, at least in competition. I'm sure they've trained it quite a bit, but it's a little bit different when you're going live. And you see Mark Gray steps over the mountain. And the patience it took for him, because I really feel like somebody else would have immediately tried that. And he just waited, and he just hit a huge elbow from the top. Yeah, Iglesias is trying to do something to move, trying to tie things up. And this is Mark Gray. This is his world. These are his people, you can hear them. You hear that roar. Always brings a big crew of supporters. And again, look at the technique. He's, he's full mount, he'll break find the legs when he needs to. He locks him down, holds his head, keeps him in position, shoulder blades flat on the mat. And when he wants to uncork, he uncorks. Iglesias doing a good job of trying to buck, but you gotta do two different things here. You gotta get your hand on a knee and you gotta buck there. You can't think about trying to launch or yeet Mark Gray over the side of the cage. You gotta try to think of getting to half guard. Yeah, especially with the rest of the quality of Mark Gray. You know, maybe somebody else, a series of bucks like that would get you free, but that's not gonna get Mark Gray off his base, as you can see. Just great balance from this position. Now trying to turn it up with these elbows. Crowd coming alive. They want their guy to get the first round finish. He's got a minute to try. I feel like Mark Gray is doing damage, but Iglesias is wearing it well, and he's still moving on the bottom. Yep. He's still moving. That base from Mark Gray is just so solid. I think you nailed it, Punk. Iglesias has got to make the adjustments. If he can survive to round two, hopefully his corner gives him that advice, because again, I mean, this is a lot of bucking, but it's just not going to get Mark Gray off of it. I think all it's going to do at this point is make Hector tired. Yes. Again, you know, he needs to pick a side. He needs to try to get to one of his hips, put both his hands on the knee, and then buck. To his credit, 15 seconds remaining. He has survived underneath here, but what at what cost, right? As you said, the energy expense it must take yeah. to do that. Final seconds ticking off the clock there. Well, what this tells me is, you know, the start of the second round, you best believe Mark's going to sprint across and he's going to shoot the first chance he gets. 100%. There's not a whole lot of highlights we can show you, ladies and gentlemen. There's a few few elbows, but to start it all right here was a big right hand. And then Mark recognized, oh, hey, I can shoot. And then here's the big takedown, the big drive immediately in the side control. Now, gets into the side, half guard of Hector Iglesias, but then full mount, best move of the, the round right there, best move of the fight thus far. And this was all she wrote. I mean, 10-8, you know, like. Quite possibly, quite possibly. I mean, maybe not as much damage as you like to see, but I mean, it was one-sided. I mean, I, I, you don't need our expert advice to tell you uh, who won that round, you know what I mean? So we'll see. Our. Uh, only fans ring card girl there letting us know that it is round number two. Round two, action. Hector Iglesias is gonna wanna try to do something while he's on his feet because I don't know how long that will be. Seems to be moving well. I was worried about the energy level, but he does seem to be moving well. Yeah. Staying on the outside. I'd like to see him start at least painting some knees and some uppercuts to make Mark not do that. 18 seconds in, Mark Gray back on top. Well, we knew it was coming. I'm not even the amazing Kreskin, but I knew I could see the future. Mark Gray once again on top position. I like what Mark's doing, you know. He's throwing from the bottom, and he can throw elbows, so you could try to cut Mark Gray, and that could change the, 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 the face of the fight. Half guard here, but what you do see is Iglesias doing some different things on the bottom. Unfortunately, Gray gets out the side control. He did kind of implement those adjustments instead of just pure bucking. He was trying to get the foot on the hips. Maybe a little butterfly in there, but Gray out to side control now, and he's gonna try to do damage from here. 
again. So now he can use those elbows from his position, which he couldn't do before. So he's looking over the corner right there to get some advice. Hold that arm is right there. Know, Dangerous. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> yeah. about to lock up oh. that. Oh. They were just sitting there for him. Just missed the opportunity. Ooh, careful with those elbows. Look like maybe keep Peterson warming the two. Don't hit the back of the head with those. Don't think he was targeting it, but it was landing there. I mean, Mark's about to crucifix him here. Steps over and does. Great work from Iglesias to turn, but still not out of trouble. Reestablishes the crucifix. Trying to punch away and get this thing finished. Mark Gray. He wants that win, doesn't he? He wants that pro debut. Exclamation mark. Arm now in danger as well. Exclamation mark Gray. That could be a fantastic. Ooh, I like that one. I like no, that. No. I'll let his corner decide when they watch his back. I'll only take 10%. <laughs> All future merchandise. In the mount again. Dominating the positioning once again. Looking for the big shot to try to finish this fight. It's just a matter of time at this point. I mean, you have over half of the round here. Iglesias has so far weathered the storm. I feel like maybe Mark is almost being too reserved. He's got some openings here, and he's looking for ground and pound where in my opinion, he should be trying to cross one of those arms over the body of Iglesias, maybe go for an arm bar. Well, and the resiliency that Iglesias has shown underneath, maybe the submission might be the better opportunity. I mean, he's, he's taking the shots, but there have been a couple of options that, that Gray has passed on. I love the way he pushes on the face. Look at that. Nasty. Isn't it? More than two minutes remaining, Mark Gray again in complete control. We told you this kid looked good in his next gen career. We've had our eyes on him for a while as a potential top prospect. Patrick Iglesias came in here willing to take the challenge of his pro debut as well. But uh, he's finding it tough going thus far. And this is his first fight at Bantamweight, too, Mark Gray. You know, shows that he, he's at the right camp, good team. Telling him how to do things the right way when you're an amateur, no reason to cut an unnecessary amount of weight. Fight at featherweight when you turn pro, we'll go down the bantam. Smart. Obviously made the weight no problem. Can be a wrestler. Watching real close right now, by the way. He might stop this. Keith's in there. Looks like he's not wanting Iglesias to take a lot more damage here. Shots landing. Yeah, I think Mark Gray senses the presence over there. He's trying to turn up the volume a little bit. Not a lot of damage being done, but just repeated shots and shots. And, and, you know, the referee is there to protect the fighters from themselves a lot of the time. One minute remaining. You see again, Gray continues to put his hand on the face. Just nasty in there. Then a ball punches and elbows behind. Just once again, another dominant round here from Mark Gray. Yeah, at what point do you consider it a 10 8? You know, you, you, you're talking about damage. I'm, I, damage. I'm talking about positioning here. Oh, yeah. You know, for two whole rounds, he's almost had this man mounted. <laughs> oh, some of those big shots landing. You can hear him there. Yep, they're Fully in. postured up and landing big shots. Takes a look over his corner once again. I feel like that armor is right there. Oh, yeah, I agree. The way, the way Hector Iglesias is just pushing that, that arm up just to the sky. Mark's got a game plan, though. He wants that. He wants the TKO, I think. I love it. Just grinding away. Nasty on top. He's trying to finish it here as the final seconds tick off the clock. Keith Peterson right on top of it as he glazes. Okay. Survives once again. And Yeah, I mean, listen, I got to think. I, I, I would think that's a 10-8 round. I would, it, maybe the first one was, too. I, I, want to, I want to talk about something that I think a lot of fight fans don't ever really want to address. Like, at this point, if you're the corner of Hector Iglesias, like, do you, do you let him off the stool? It's a nice right hand there by Hector Iglesias to start that second round, but uh, Mark's seen enough of that. Shoots the double. Winds up in the full guard. Winds up fully mounting. Hector Iglesias once again, and it's just, I mean, raining ground and pound. It's like New Orleans during a hurricane. It just doesn't stop. It's falling from the sky. You can't escape it. Well, so if you're Iglesias' corner, you know, like if you're if you're possibly staring down the barrel of two 10-8 rounds, you you know your your guy needs a KO or a submission. 
Yeah, it's it's weird, right? Because it's not a ton of like concussive damage, but it was a lot of shots. And I mean, I'm not questioning the heart of Hector Iglesias. No, I'm, not at trust all. Me, trust me, I'm just trying to kind of be a little bit of a disturber here and you know ask the questions I don't think a lot of other people ask. You know, it's 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 a fascinating. Oh, look at that, Mark Gray throwing a leg kick. <laughs> Why not? I like the kind of leaping defense there. That was nice. Mark Gray feels free to kind of do whatever he wants there. Yeah, be careful with that. I mean, Iglesias, Iglesias still looks super fresh. You know, he's still moving around. I'll tell you this much. If somebody mounted me for 10 minutes, I I don't know if I'd get off my stool. You know, 32 but, seconds into round number three is on his back again. Yeah, we're right back to where we were in the first two rounds. If he stays here for another four minutes, I'm super fascinated to see what the scorecards are. Right. This. I want to see maybe what judges maybe are Maybe some 24s in there? Yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, this is just what Mark Gray does. This is why we've been so impressed with him, because it's one of these fighters that you know exactly what the game plan is. That's why I kind of joked off the top. Like, hey, no, I'm not giving away anything here. We know it's going to be. Everybody that's fought knows what he's going to do yep. and just absolutely can't stop it. Absolutely, and then what this is going to do is the future opponents of Mark Gray are going to have to really study this and, and really drill their wrestling and their defense and their their use of the cage, staying off the fence. You know, you, he's given you the blueprint right here, you know, and Iglesias so far is surviving. Mark Gray is doing everything he can to try to get this finish with ground and pound, and he's not getting tired. No. He's going to be he's going to be trouble for bantamweights going forward. Yeah, if you're a future Mark Gray opponent and you're watching this, you don't have to watch any of his other fights. This is it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to save you some time. This is it. Yeah. This the is other, what he does. The other ones are shorter rounds and at featherweight. You're looking at the re real deal Holyfield right here. Just watch this fight. Can you stop that takedown? Can you stop that forward pressure? That's the answer you're going to have to have you step in there against a man that looks very much on his way to being a 1-0 professional. Kudos to Hector Iglesias for being tough as nails underneath and trying. I mean, look, he's, he's up on his left hip right now. He's trying to get an underhook and turn, but he just can't do it. Right hands landing. Gray trying to posture up. Look at no nonsense. Keith Peterson not dealing with that nonsense. Mark Gray inadvertently, probably accidentally, you know, grabbing the fence. But it doesn't matter. He doesn't allow for nonsense at all. No, not at all. Not even accidental nonsense. Imagine being his son. <laughs> oh, man. Glacius, to his credit, has worked back to his feet and right back on the ground. Mark the best Gray. he's looked, right? Like, you know, three rounds of this, and this is the first time he stood back up, but he goes right back down. Can you imagine how frustrating that must be? You work to get back up, and you're immediately deposited yeah. to your back once again. Just that's what happens when you fight Mark Gray. And you know what? Mark Gray looks good in these five-minute rounds, man. You know, yep. you, you wonder, hey, can he keep up that pace the way he did? Yeah, the answer is yeah. Yeah, I got a feeling he was training five-minute rounds the entire time, you know. Uh, 90 seconds left to go in this fight. My hat's off to Iglesias. This is a tough dude, man. Double tough. Final minute and a half ticking away here. Not a lot of drama in uh, the scores here, other than maybe just seeing how low they go. And Mark's not even trying to take his back and slip in a, a rear naked choke or anything. He just wants to beat this person up. Just continues grinding away here. Can he get a finish? Under a minute to go. He wants to get it done. He's not giving up. Keith Peterson watching close once again. And that's going to do it. it. Wow, he gets the stoppage. Mark Gray's got to be thinking, what do I got to do? Wow. Iglesias, I don't think uh, super happy, but that's a great stoppage. You know, Keith, Keith's seen enough. You know, we, we talked talked about it at the beginning of the round. You even let this guy off the stool. Yeah. You know, you gave gave the fighter a fighting chance. And again, hats off to uh, Hector Iglesias. Yeah. I take nothing away from him. Tough, as, tough son of a bitch. Look, he was, as you said, a little bit frustrated, but Keith Peterson, I mean, as good of an official as there is out yes. there, and he was right and he was right on top of it the whole time. You yes. can see he was making constant yes. eye contact, evaluating. 
shots. There were a lot of shots. I, again, not a ton of damage through two, two rounds. I wouldn't hate it if, if, if his corner said, hey, we're, we're not sending you out there. Uh, well, it's, it's, you know, but Saturday, Saturday night, Herb Dean stopped. Uh, you know, he saw enough here. Kareem Zami took enough damage from Alexander Volkanovsky. I think this is kind of the same situation. You know, he, this is a takedown. I couldn't tell you if it was from the first, the second, and the third <laughs> round. I'm pretty sure it was the third. Um, there weren't a lot of them, but when he scored them, he stayed on top. He did his job. Mark Gray, phenomenal wrestler, possibly even better mixed martial artist, wins his pro debut. Dramatic stoppage in the third round. Ladies and gentlemen, Keith Peterson stopped this bout at four minutes and 13 seconds in the third round. Winner by TKO due to excessive strikes, Mark Gray. Impressive win in his debut as advertised. His amateur career was phenomenal. And uh, he looks great as a professional as well. Pay attention to that man. You're going to be seeing more of him. You're going to be seeing him on USC Fight Pass. You're going to see us on USC Fight Pass. Main card coming next. In a little bit. What are we doing? <laughs> We're wrapping up the prelims. You know, just having fun here on Facebook, YouTube. There's that main card that's going to be on USC Fight Pass. The title fight in the main event. Blake Builder versus Hechivaldo Carvalho. We've got the the uh, the cannibal Charlie Campbell there versus Guillermo Dos Santos in the co-main. Big, big, big Velasco. Can't wait for that. I know that's one of your favorites. Love him. I don't, I don't want to give away all our good material now, though. We got to get the paying customers on USC Fight Pass. All you, all you people watching this for free, sign up. Go pay. That's where you get the good stuff. We're just yeah. sitting here eating sushi and watching wrestling. You know what I mean? Come on. Don't give away our trade secrets here. <laughs> <laughs> Main card, CFSC 107, USC Fight Pass. Pretty much just about now, so press X, close the browser, USC Fight Pass, we'll see you shortly.